reviewed the E39 M5 as well as the E60 M5. I am incredibly excited today for the F10. Now, the BMW M5 is in a way the ultimate extreme daily driver. It is something that's comfortable, luxurious to the utmost degree, but then also has an incredible engine, has intense handling characteristics, can perform around a track, put a smile on your face as well as store three golf clubs and go to the driving range. BMW has in a way strayed from its roots. This car weighs a lot, 4,300 pounds. It has turbochargers coming from a naturally aspirated V8 and then a screaming, beautiful sounding V10. It left some people a little bit disappointed. But we're here to see whether the F10 M5 lives up to the legacy that the BMW M5s before it have created. 4.4 liter V8, twin turbo, 560 horsepower, 500 pound-feet of torque. It'll get this over 4,000 pound luxury sedan to 60 in 3.7 seconds. That's a supercar time right there. 12 seconds flat, you're flying through the quarter mile, and in less than 15 seconds, you're doing a stupid illegal speeds. Right off the bat, the F10 feels like a bigger car than the E60 and the E39. There's no hiding the larger dimensions and more weight. It's still got great steering, but it feels a little bit more numb than either of its predecessors. What you do get in return, though, is enormous cargo space and legroom. It's really spacious in here. Mm -hmm. And a stupid fast power plant. 560 horsepower. It's 575 with the competition package. And the power, despite being turbocharged, comes on in a very linear fashion. It's kind of an uninterrupted power with the DCT transmission. So first gear, second gear. This pulls hard. really, really hard. <laughs> there really isn't any turbo lag. Turbo technology has advanced so much uh, to where the downsides of the turbos have kind of disappeared. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing uh, that people have issue with is typically the sound, not the lag anymore. This car, I'm impressed in person. It sounds a lot better than it does online. Mm -hmm. It's not as great as a muffler deleted E60 M5 V10, but it doesn't disappoint me in any ways. And of course you've got BMW's uh, fancy electronic sound coming through um, the interior, which love it or hate it, it's you know, there. <laughs> it's there. It, it sounds great in here, but it, it leaves you wondering yeah. how much of that is real. As we mentioned before, this car has grown very large, but with that, you get all the nice creature comforts of a big luxury vehicle. You have heated and cooled front seats, heated rear seats, soft closed doors, power sunshades. This center navigation display screen has awesome graphics, and a backup camera it has all the great technology and luxury features that the newest top end luxury cars will have. Exterior wise, E60. Yeah. I hated it. Yeah. It was the Chris Bangle generation. People yeah. deemed the rear of it the Bangle butt. Yeah. It wasn't appealing, which was a shame because it had such a beautiful F1 inspired engine in it. Yeah. This, I like it. I think it looks a lot more aggressive and it's differentiated a, a lot more from the more pedestrian normal F10s mm -hmm. than I think M5s in the past were. You know, you get the E39. 540i with the mtech package the front end basically looks the same it didn't have side vents looks mean yes it does indeed do i love the f10 m5 yes is it the same m5 that bmw originally sought to create absolutely no. not part of that's not their fault this car is based on the normal f10 5 series consumers demand larger and larger interiors, more luxury and more safety. BMW has to comply, they're a business, they have to sell cars. But when you base the M5 on the normal vehicle, it's already heavy. It, it's already heavy. Yeah. There's some limitations behind that. I guarantee the people who built this car in their mind, they want this for the for the enthusiast, that's the person who buys it. They wanted it to be lighter. They wanted it to be slightly smaller. Yeah. But it's just not possible. That's just how it is, yeah. It's not the same, it is bigger, it doesn't handle quite as well as the last generations, but it brings things 
that that those didn't have. It's much faster. It's much more refined. Comfortable. It's more comfortable. Luxurious, yes. You have to know that you're getting something different, but it's fantastic in its own right. As a quick summary, here are some of the things we love about this car and hate about it. First off, the engine. It doesn't scream like the old cars do, but it produces so much horsepower and so much torque. Twin turbo 4.4 liter V8, 560 horsepower, 500 pound-feet of torque. It'll get this heavy sedan to 60 in 3.7 seconds, which is pretty much a supercar time. Finally, the transmission is up to par with a car that performs this well and costs this much. The new DCT is fantastic. Shifts are very, very quick. It's so much better uh, than the SMGs in the previous gen DCT. Of course, the E39 only came in a manual, so you can't compare that. Yep. This car also comes in a manual. That would be that's, a cool car, a manual sweet. F10 M5. But yeah, this transmission shifts But the very transmission fast. adds to the experience. It doesn't hinder the car in any way. It allows acceleration times that weren't possible before. Yep. Third, the luxury features and technology features in this car make the E60 and the previous E39 look just spartan. Heated, cooled front seats, has up display, power sun shades, soft closed doors. It has everything you would want in a top-end luxury sedan. Lastly, they finally fixed the looks. The E60 generation, I think, ugly. honestly, it's ugly. This, it looks aggressive and elegant at the same time, and I'm proud that this is a BMW M5. Yes. Some of the things we hate about it, it's heavy. There's no getting away from that fact. It's over 4,000 pounds, which is I think over 300 more than the previous generation. And even though it's got a big power plant, you just can't get away from that weight. It feels like a big, heavy car at times. It definitely feels larger than the previous generations. The handling isn't quite as, you know, nice it's not as connected to the road. It doesn't feel as razor sharp yep. or, or nimble as the previous generations. The other thing is the sound. Again, this is a forced induction engine, and BMW even had to install an electronic engine track that plays through the speakers, and that's just straight up fake. But it just does not scream like the old naturally aspirated high revving engines did. Now, that's not to say we dislike it. We're no. actually really impressed is, with the way it sounds. It sounds good, but the old M5s sounded incredible. You hear a little bit of turbocharger, it does sound good, but just not compared to the old ones. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Special thanks to Mike Schaefer at Grand Blanc Motor Cars in Grand Blanc, Michigan for making this video possible. Hit him up, he'll give you a heck of a deal. This M5 is awesome, so go check it out. Look forward to seeing you next video.